Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines should be another wake-up call for us. You know, if you look back over the last 30 years, uh, we've suffered about $4 trillion in economic losses from uh, natural disasters. Um, two and a half million people have lost their lives. And if you look at it on a yearly basis, in 1980, uh, the economic losses totaled about $50 billion from all natural disasters. And in 2012, that number went up to $200 billion. So if you look at the proportion of, that, of those losses from natural disasters that is attributable to extreme weather events, it's about three quarters. So as much as $150 billion was lost in 2012 as a result of extreme weather events. Now it's impossible to connect any single extreme weather event to climate change, but what the climate scientists have told us is that both the intensity and frequency of these extreme weather events will go up as a result of climate change. The phenomenon of climate change has so far resulted in a rise in sea levels of only about seven and a half inches. But we know that the, the seas will continue to rise. Fundamentally, what's happening is that the Earth is processing water differently than it did before. And so what we're going to see is that the number of extreme weather events will increase. Now, um, uh, Typhoon uh, Haiyan was the most severe storm to ever hit the Philippines. You know, we talk about Category 5 um, events like this as once-in-a-lifetime events, but two occurred in the same region in a single month. Uh, we simply have to stop talking about them as once-in-a-lifetime events and get serious about tackling the root causes of this increased intensity and frequency. You know, what we're seeing in the Philippines is what we see everywhere in the world. These extreme weather events have a huge impact, but they hit hardest for the poorest. Uh, what, we're, what we saw was the, the, uh, the complete destruction of uh, homes that weren't, uh, in fact, built with the best materials, and these were the poor people who were affected the most. You know, if uh, we're to be serious about trying to end poverty and boost shared prosperity, especially for the poorest, we've got to tackle climate change, and we've got to get serious about keeping the rising of the temperature of the world, the rising of the oceans, to a minimum, or these extreme weather events will continue to pummel and hurt the poor the most. We know that climate change will increase the number of extreme weather events. But we've now got to start thinking about the connection between our battle against climate change and our effort uh, to respond to these disasters. You know, there are things we can do right now to reduce greenhouse gases. We can build cleaner, more livable cities. We can invest in climate smart agriculture. We can give access to renewable energy uh, for, for everybody. We can remove fuel subsidies and we can find a stable price on carbon. We can do those five things and really tackle climate change. Now, we have to do those things, but in the meantime, we know that every dollar invested in uh, prevention, in preparing for these extreme weather events, will save three to four dollars in rebuilding. And if you look at, at, a, at a single intervention, uh, early warning systems, we found that a dollar spent on early warning systems can save up to $35 uh, later uh, because people will know, can evacuate, and prepare themselves for what's to come. You know, uh, at the World Bank Group, uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to battle climate change. But we know that the battle against climate change has to be linked to efforts to prepare the poorest countries for these kinds of extreme weather events.